Hello everyone, welcome to opening day. The first match is Newport County. Ranroth here as we take on Club Leon in this friendly. A lot to talk about, a lot of transfer action in the interim between this match and uh, the last video where we started up the career mode. But uh, first, let's go through our match lineup. Uh, in goal, we've got Lenny Pidgeley. We're giving him a go. He's, he's probably going to be our main keeper for most of the season, unless he does prove to be terrible, like uh, in the last season. Uh, right back, a new face, Andras Struna, a 25-year-old Slovenian. We just picked him up um, so we can have some actual right backs. Uh, the two center backs, with Ismail Yakabu and Darren Jones. They're uh, both experienced. I'm really glad to have them as our anchors back there. They're probably going to be our main starters for now. Uh, at left back, Sibusiso Kumalo, another new player that we just acquired in the break. Uh, South African, 23. I expect him to be very good. He's going to develop pretty well. Moving into the midfield on the right, we've got Danny Becarano, who we signed just at the end of uh, that last video. The Bolivian midfielder, I expect uh, him to develop a little bit. He didn't develop when I picked up um, him up in the last game, but he started out better. I expect him to get, at least to get a little more. He'll probably be a regular player for us this season. Midfielders, we've got Michael Flynn, who's wearing the captain's armband. He's our more attacking uh, center mid option. Uh, and the other center mid is Max Porter. He's slightly more defensive. He'll hang back a bit more. Uh, we have listed him for transfer. He's our weakest midfielder. I'd like to get rid of him, bring in some money to bring in maybe more free agents who will uh, fill the role better. We've got Michael Flynn moving forward here on the right. To Becarano again. He skips inside. Oh, he's skipping it away. And, and the other midfielder on the left, we've got Andy Sandel, who's uh, you know, traditionally a defender, but we're going to play him in midfield for most of the season. We've got uh, Andrew Hughes on the bench, who's going to be our backup left back for Kamalo. I figure that'll be the way it'll go most of the time. Got a good break here for Leon, but the match has been offside. Uh, our two strikers today are uh, Rene Howe, the big man, good strength, and uh, Aaron O'Connor, who's a bit faster. I'll try and get him in behind, get us some chances today. On the bench, Joe Day is our other keeper. We don't have a third option, so it's always going to be those two in some order. Ryan Jackson's on the bench. He's our uh, he's set as a right wing back, so he could come on in defense or on the right wing. Uh, he's fairly quick, so he'll be decent there. Uh, we've got Jan Klukowski as our center mid substitute. Uh, good all round, fairly pacey, decent on the ball. And we'll see where we need to put him, depending on how this game goes. Oh, that was a close one. Um, I did uh, do some research into Club Leon. They, uh, they are indeed Mexican. I wasn't sure when I saw them last time, but I looked them up. They are from Mexico, and they are a fairly decent side as well. Um, rated at three stars just in the uh, kickoff mode. We're rated at one, so I don't suppose I should have too high expectations for this match. Um, but we've played some good defense so far. I would uh, like to keep that going, and perhaps we just keep it scoreless. So we've got Lalrindika Ralta, the Indian left midfielder who we first was our first signing in the other video. We saw him and he's on the bench. And then two strikers, Christian Jolly and Chris Zabrowski, two uh, other really good options. That's our uh, on the park squad and the bench. Well, let's uh, talk about some of the other transfer activity we've been looking at. Another player that we've signed, Marco Somoza, he's another right back. Um, he'll be, I'm having to decide if he's going to be backup for Struna or if he's just going to you know, switch off every game. We'll see how they play. Uh, Somoza's a uh, high Paraguayan, 21 year old. He's, I think he's got a good future. 
so we we'll probably keep him a lot, around a lot longer than Struna, who's 25 and a bit moving on, in the middle of his career. But it's a bit difficult. Aaron O'Connor breaking into the box, but yeah, he just can't beat off the second defender. Um, so we'll figure out the right back situation as uh, the season progresses. We do have uh, Ryan Jacks who can play there, but if he's playing defense, then we won't have any backup for Beccarano. That's a good ball in from Struna picking out how. Hurdles one challenge as a shot, got fairly tamed straight at the keeper. So Marco Somoza was signed, um, Struna and Kamalo of course. The next player we were looking into was uh, another keeper, just in case Pidgeley is bad and to cover once Joe Day goes back to Peterborough. I'm looking into Jose Miguel Silvera, another Paraguayan. Uh, he's he, he looks to be decent, he's fairly expensive. We can't afford him just yet. The the two midfielders and the three defenders, that's exhausted pretty much all of my money, but good signings. We've covered what we needed. Uh, another goalkeeper is not absolutely necessary right now, but uh, we will you know, keep, if we have extra money, I think he'll be the next player I go for. Breaking forward, we've got O'Connor and Rene Howe moving the ball back and forth to go back to Porter. And it's up to Baker on the right. This attack means something. There's Flynn. Up to Kamalo. A little bit more switches to Porter. Through the gap to Becarano. Good overlap by Struna. Swings it in first time. Trying to find how. It's knocked out. And Leon are going to move this ball out. Another player we looked at, but fairly low on the uh, priority list. Cedric Jugo, a center back from Cameroon. I picked him up in a, in a second career mode last, in last FIFA. Uh, he's decent. I think he's got a bright future, so we'll definitely keep him on the radar even if we don't pick him up immediately. Maybe a good signing in a year or two, but we'll try and maybe get him earlier if, if possible. And just to save a little cash. Good tackle by Yaku. Yeah, we read that one well. Sends it forward to. O'Connor, can we counter? We have to go back, no real options on up front. Um, another player we're looking to, Pedro Azegui. I picked him up in the last two games. Uh, he's a center midfielder from Bolivia. A lot of these players that we pick up, they're free agents. That, uh, that's all I've been looking into, is just free agents, because no transfer fee cuts down the costs. And uh, since they're not playing... Oh, that's a good long ball look for O'Connor. He's like, offside. Uh, so, Pedro Aske, good player. He, uh, in FIFA 13, he developed really well. Uh, I picked him up at the beginning of the season, and he stayed with me uh, for all four or five years that I got through into the Premier League as Champions League winners. He uh, made semi-frequent appearances then. I think he ended up somewhere in the mid 70s, starting out in mid low 60s, 63. We're looking into him, but another midfielder is not a high priority either. Um, we've got half time now. We've held on this long. We've definitely given up a lot of possession and a few shots, but it's not like we haven't worked our way forward and caused some damage up there. Uh, nil nil scoreline. I am happy with at half time. Through the sweet new highlight reel that they've set up. A lot of players, uh, they just show the players walking out, just bouncing around, ready to get going, and the kickoff. We'll skip through those. Um, last player that I looked into um, over the, the break between starting in this match, Bongi and Tuli, another South African. He's a striker, he's a good all round player. Um, he's got some speed, some strength. Decent finishing. He uh, could grow into something really good. But uh, again, not really a major, uh, a major target at the moment as we've got plenty of strikers. And that's all that I went looking into. The only other mild transfer to be is we did put a couple of players up. Uh, Ellis Redman. I loan listed him 
and uh, got pretty much immediate uh, offer from Wimbledon, and uh, so we sent him off to there and be able to get some playing time and develop. Uh, and also, we put Max Porter up for transfer. He's our weakest midfielder. If we're going to be going for the 4-4-2 approach, we're not going to need as many uh, center mids as we would if we went with the 5-3-2. Oh, we've got a break in here for... Oh, no. And there goes our plan. Holy poor marking in the box there. He did... That score did seem to have a, a lot of space. No one really around him. Let's see. Yeah. Is that Jones that just... Uh, Jones stepped off to mark the guy with the assist and no one came across to help. I don't think I can blame Pidgeley for that one yet. I'll give him that one's pretty freebie, not what she could do. I'll blame that one on poor marking. So, Max Porter on transfer list. No activity for him yet. We did get an offer for uh, Danny Crow. He's our lowest rated striker and a bit old, like, he'll uh, retire within the next three or four years, I suspect. Uh -huh. It was from Wickham Wanderers, a little more than he's worth, but uh, I don't think I want to sell him just yet. I think I'd rather have him around for a little while. Um, I did counter offer for him. Uh, what was it? I think he said he was worth 90000 The offer came in at 100 Okay, that's for 125. We'll see what they do with that, but uh, no response yet. Yeah, that's about it for transfer news. Move on to a different topic that uh, I was encouraged to address. Uh, Even not a big deal. Those uh, sources that are doing the encouraging will remain anonymous for the moment. But now I'm breaking into the box. Uh, I'm forced to move it around. That's how we like to defend, keep them on the outside, make them work. And, oh, that's a good save from Pidgeley. That was a fairly good save. I guess uh, Pidgeley's still in the good books for now, even though we're still defending. He kept it out, played it to one of our defenders. I, ooh, that's an awkward shot, but Yakubu knocking it over the bar. I'm not sure if he knew too much about it. So, that uh, topic that we're going to bring up is... The way I speak, you know, most people are just going to think, you know, average American sounds American, must be American. And on those parts, that's true. My regular, everyday, average speech, typical West Coast American accent. But uh, to those that might be slightly uh, more sensitive to it, they're going to hear that you know, when you try to sound British or English, because... And we're in the football world, and that's what we sound like. And some might say, oh, that's a fake, that's terrible. Why would you fake being British to make yourself sound better? Well, the truth is, I'm kind of stuck in somewhere in between. I actually was born British. I was born in England, spent most of my life in Scotland, that's my ancestry, so... When you do hear it, it's not in... It's, it's not at all faked, it's just in there. Those of you who are, uh, immigrants and know a little bit how accents work. If, uh, if if your accent from your original country fades and you pick up the accent of the country you're living in, there's a, I'm sure there's some cutoff at age um, when that just doesn't happen. Um, I have a friend over here in the States that is from England. He moved over here a year or two after I did and he still sounds like a full-on Englishman. Whereas me, entirely American accent. Um, not sure what the cutoff is, I'm sure it depends on a lot of things, but, you know, when kids in your class at school can't understand you because you talk different from them, you kind of just want to switch to, so you don't feel like the outcast. Um, oh, we've got a break on here, Sandal with the interception gets to O'Connor, but it's closed down quickly, and back, and Sandell just miscontrols that, and sticks it out of play. But they give it right back, how nice, thank you. Um, so, on the accent thing, yeah, it, ac those, those accents that you have 
when uh, you know, that, that might creep up like it does with me. They normally come out in certain situations if you've got this uh, immigrant accent thing going on, you'll understand. Normally when you're emotional, mainly angry, maybe really happy too, depends who you are, um, it, your uh, underlying accent will pop up, and it does so for me too. And also when I am talking about football, because most of the most of the football I watch is narrated, commentated, commented on, that's the correct grammar, um, by British guys. Um, as I mentioned in the uh, very first preview video, Big Celtic Fan, I do watch their, all their matches on the, the Celtic website stream. Um, so we've got a couple of Glaswegians um, commenting on those matches. So I, occasionally I will use their accent and terminology. They're fairly quirky guys, so if you know them, you may hear a few of their, uh, what would you call them, figures of speeches, I suppose. Um, so now that we've opened the can of worms of, uh, you know, British, American accents, language, I'm gonna, I know I'm gonna get the question, football versus soccer? It all depends on who you're talking to. Over in the States, I'm not too worried about it. If people want to call it football because oh, the rest of the world calls it football, that's what it is. Well, the English called it soccer first. Oh, oh good ball from O'Connor to Howe. Good, good save. Okay, well kept out. Um, so here we got my football soccer discussion. Uh, it all depends where you are, who you're talking to. Uh, if I tend to go with. Uh, with soccer when I'm in the States, it's what most people understand. Um, but since this is a big international game and uh, we're an international platform on YouTube, I'll go with football because it's it just distinguishes what I'm talking about to most people. We have to change it up in the States because we've got American football, which well, really isn't, right? There's not much use of the feet, except for running on the occasional kicking. Um, not even a ball, it's kind of not barely round, pointy ball, pointy ball I think some people call it, or just hand egg. Yeah, we'll go with that one, that's a fun one. Um, so yeah, big differentiation between you know, the real football and big muscly guys in pads and spandex trying to grab each other. Not that I hate football or American football, it's just what it is. I much prefer association football as it was originally known, that's where the word soccer came from. So when I refer to football, we'll, we'll just say that I'm, I'm talking about this uh, lovely game that actually uses their feet and a round ball. Unless, of course, we're on a segment where I decide to talk about the NFL. Just use your low, figure it out. I'm not, I'm not going to be you know, addressing any arguments that you use the wrong word. Yeah, it happens. I've done it before on much simpler explanations. So there that is. Any other questions or comments on that one? We will we can address. We reached the end of the game. We'll just start closing this out. Don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed what we're talking about. Enjoy the match we're playing. Subscribe if you really love it, but no pressure. I'm not going to force anyone into anything. Do what you do what you like. Don't if you don't. I love comments. Uh, something to respond to. Let me know if you got any questions. Oh, it's a good save. Oh no, he's giving it right back. Bullets expected that to go in. Pitchley made a, uh, a save, that's what I will call it, but he didn't really put it anywhere good. Striker had an open net to shoot at. Easy side foot, and he overthought it and put it wide. 
soon. Yep, there's the final whistle. We are all done. We did lose that game, but only 1-0. Not too worried about it. Uh, we got some work to do. Um, so we'll look forward to the uh, next video. We'll be playing Benfica. So thanks for joining us. Subscribe, comment, like if you feel like it. And uh, we'll see you next time.